Hi everyone, welcome back this week. A long COVID report from CDC caught my eye this week. It said approximately one in five American adults who have had COVID-19 still have long COVID. A news article from late August said long COVID might be keeping up to four million Americans from working. At the same time, there are also increasing reports of acute autoimmune-related sickness post-vaccine. Even though President Biden said pandemic is over, clearly there are still long-lasting health-related issues we need to pay attention to. So let's find out what could be the possible link between post-COVID vaccine autoimmune syndrome and long COVID. Let's first look at long COVID's impact. Long COVID symptoms can be grouped into three general clusters: one neurological, second respiratory, and third systemic inflammatory. Neurological symptoms appear to have been receiving more attention. A research team from the Northwestern University School of Medicine reported that non-hospitalized COVID-19 patients continue to experience neurological symptoms such as fatigue. And compromised the quality of life for 14.8 months after initial infection, and their studied patients' average age was 42.8 years old. 73% of them were female, and 77% had received COVID vaccine. According to the CDC, up to one in 13 American adults have long COVID symptoms. Younger adults are more likely than older adults to have long COVID, and women are about twice as likely as men to have long COVID. Unfortunately, there is currently no test to diagnose long COVID. So, what could be the reason for long COVID? Some studies suggested that the virus may be lingering in the whole human body for an extended period of time, particularly in the brain, and causing ongoing damage. But other studies suggest that our body's own immune system or response may be responsible. Researchers from Yale University School of Medicine reported finding autoantibodies, a type of antibodies that attack a person's healthy cells in acute COVID-19 patients. These autoantibodies particularly target the immune systems and the brain. A research team from the Cedars Sinai Medical Center in California reported that autoantibodies could last up to six months after infection. They also observed that women with asymptomatic infection had more autoantibodies, and men developed more autoantibodies with mildly symptomatic infection. However, their study did not correlate autoantibodies with long COVID symptoms. A recent German review article that has an English abstract it summarizes that neurological damage after COVID-19 is not so likely caused by the invasion of SARS-CoV-2 into the brain or spinal cord, but it's rather possible due to the development of specific autoantibody against CNS or central nervous system tissues. All of these studies suggest that autoimmunity could be one of the reasons for long COVID. But how does it relate to post-COVID vaccine autoimmune syndrome? Let's look at autoimmunity response after COVID vaccine. In a conference meeting abstract published by the American College of Rheumatology, researchers from NYU reported three of 60 patients had anti-nuclear antibodies, a type of autoantibody that target the normal proteins within the nucleus of a cell. Four to five weeks after mRNA COVID vaccine, one was a healthy individual, and two had other immune-mediated inflammatory diseases. Now, the healthy individual also had SCL70 autoantibodies, which is a specific marker for systemic sclerosis, which is a condition characterized by hardening and tightening of the skin. Fortunately, anti-nuclear antibodies were no longer detected at the three-month time point, and no participant developed new autoimmune diseases, according to the report. Autoimmune or autoinflammatory syndromes after vaccine also does not appear to be exclusively associated with the mRNA vaccine. 
a review article published in April 2022 in Clinical Rheumatology, provided a summary table showing reports of a spectrum of autoimmune diseases and detected autoantibodies in association with most of the COVID vaccines. Now, however, it is important to note that these were associations, not causation. The review article also summarized that the incidence was very low, and in most cases, these autoimmune syndromes are controlled with steroids and other immune medications, and are short-lived. Dr. Avindra Nath, a senior investigator from NIH, and his team released a preprint in May 2022 describing different neuropathic symptoms with COVID vaccination. They studied 23 relatively young patients who reported new neuropathic symptoms beginning within one month after COVID vaccination. Of the patients reported feeling a severe burning sensation on their faces and or limb, and biopsies from five randomly selected patients showed immune complexes deposition in endothelial cells. Now again, fortunately, most patients had complete symptom improvement after receiving steroid or immune medications. So let's look at a possible immunological mechanism that is causing these autoantibodies. Earlier this year, a potential immunological mechanism of how the bodies generated autoantibodies after COVID infection and vaccination was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. In brief, it is possible that the immune system generated antibodies against the spike protein after infection or vaccination, which is the AB1 antibodies in the figure, further stimulated the formation of anti-idiotype antibodies, which is designated as AB2. Now, these anti-idiotype antibodies may contain binding sites that may make parts of the spike protein and neutralize the anti-spike antibodies shown in the figure. At the same time, these anti-idiotype antibodies may also block or activate ACE2 receptors on target cells, leading to abnormal cellular functions. So apparently, some research is looking into the possible tie between autoimmunity, long COVID, and post-COVID vaccine syndromes. But why haven't we heard more from the mainstream? According to a health science report on Science, Dr. Nath mentioned his study about neuropathic symptoms with COVID vaccination was rejected twice since March 2021, and even now in September 2022, his report is still in preprint. Other researchers also noted that. It is not easy to approach studies about vaccine-related autoimmune side effects. It almost looks like the topic is taboo. Take the Australian government website as an example. The official language simply stated that there is no evidence to suggest that COVID-19 vaccine can cause autoimmune disease without further discussing the observed association between the two. Is simplified language enough to communicate vaccine safety to the public? To complete the picture, let's wrap up with what the official says. The American College of Rheumatology stated that the benefit of COVID-19 vaccine outweighs any small possible risk for new autoimmune reactions or disease flare after vaccination. I know this topic is very touchy and may even be labeled as causing vaccine hesitancy and misinformation. But I do strongly feel that we need to recognize and acknowledge all vaccine-related side effects, no matter how rare they are. The post-pandemic world is not going to get better unless we are honest about everything related to the vaccine, both efficacy and safety. We have to openly speak about it. If you or you know someone suffer from long COVID or long-lasting vaccine side effects, you may get in touch with me. I would really like to hear your story and experience. Now, although my channel is small in comparison, 
your voice can still be heard and shared with others. That is all for this week. Please take care. Bye.